thing down. Stop pushing Girls, are we ready? <laughs> Wait, what church is this again? St. Peter's. That's right. Today's station church is St. Peter's Basilica, and we will be here again in a few weeks. So today what we're going to talk about is the history of why it is where it is. So we are in Italy, right? No. Yes. Um, no. Not in the very least. We are in the Vatican. We're not. We're in the Vatican. That's right. So the Vatican is its own country, also its own city-state. City, state. Right. city plus state plus country equals Vatican. That's it. But we're surrounded by Italy, so some people say it's in Italy. I guess technically the Vatican is in Italy. Okay. But, but it's not, not part of it. Okay. Right. Lily's done. Have you ever heard, Lily, have you ever heard that Rome was built on seven yes. hills? Yes, 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 I have. It's not true. They lied to you. So a lot of cities would say they were built on seven hills because that was the cool thing to do. But Rome was actually founded on more than seven hills. Oh, so it's even cooler. cooler. But the Vatican is one of those hills. But if you look around, it's pretty flat. What happened to it? It's not a hill. It was leveled. It was leveled about 1,700 years ago. So we'll get to that in a minute. So if you go back to the time of Peter, when Peter was in Rome, there was this guy, Emperor Nero. He's the guy that fiddled while Rome burned. He fiddled while Rome burned. Now he had this palace and he didn't like his neighbors. Like the houses around his, they weren't as nice as his. Uh, they weren't as fancy. So he did what any normal person would do. Did he move away? No. He burned everything to the ground. Not what normal people do. No, it yeah. is a bit extreme. So he burned Rome and he didn't want to take the blame for that, so guess what he did? What? He blamed the weirdos. Who are the weirdos? The Christians. Oh, those crazy Christians. Crazy Christians. He's like, oh the Christians did it. And so everybody believed Nero, of course. They're like, oh yeah, he's right, he must have been the Christians. So they brought the head of the Christians. Do you know who that was, Lily? He wasn't a saint at the time. He was just a dude named Peter. Yeah, but Peter. now he's a saint. Now he's a so. saint. So they brought Peter here to Nero's circus. Nero had a circus here. So not hey. like a circus with monkeys and stuff, but they might have had a monkey. I don't know. Yeah, for all we know. But at the circus, what they would do is they would uh, host things like chariot races or mock battles. But in the, uh, the halftime or they, like, intermission. Would they sing? No, they didn't have sing songs. They would, Play they would, uh, no, they would kill people. Okay, this guy's extreme. <laughs> Peter was one of those people that they killed. So they brought Peter here to Nero's circus. And Lily, can you tell us how they killed him? By upside down cross. They crucified him upside down. He didn't feel that he was worthy to be martyred like Christ. So he said, Please crucify me upside down. And so after he died, how did they get him off that cross, Lily? Chopped on his face. <laughs> they chopped him off. At the, feet. At the feet. That was the easiest way to get somebody down from an upside down cross. So then they buried him in a cemetery located on, guess? Here. Uh, here. Vatican Hill. Here. I bet it was just for those, all those, all those like Christians. No, it's just regular Hill. cemetery. Oh. And then, fast forward 300 years, and who is now the emperor? Emperor Constantine. That's right, Constantine. The good so guy. He was a good guy. So he built churches over significant places. One of those places was the tomb of Peter. That's pretty significant. Yep, so he leveled Vatican Hill. That's why it's flat now. He took the dirt, filled up the tombs that were there, and built a church on top, the Church of St. Peter's. So that church stood for about a thousand years, and then they built the new St. Peter's, the one you see behind us. It's my move. Now, in 1377, Pope, wait, which Pope was it? Uh, Gregory XI. That's right. And so he lived where, Amelia? In Avignon, France. And he is the one that moved back to Rome. He's the one that St. Catherine convinced. That's right, so he lived in Avignon. St. Catherine said, move back to Rome, and so he did. And when he did, 
he moved here to the Vatican. So he was the first pope to live at the Vatican. Oh, pretty cool. And so this has been the home of the popes for the last, what's that, 700 years yeah, or so? it's been a while. Yeah. Oh, what about Peter's tomb? Yeah. Let's talk about Peter's tomb. So they always assumed that Peter was buried here, but they didn't really know for sure. Because there, you know, a lot of bones under there. Yeah, lots of bones. And yeah. plus, if you recall, Constantine filled up all those tombs with dirt and then used that as the foundation. Hard. Makes it kind of hard to figure it so out. So guess when they found Peter's tomb and they realized it was actually Peter's tomb? When was that? 1940. 1940s. 1940s. That's like yesterday. That's like yesterday in history. Do you know one of the ways that they were able to authenticate his tomb, Lily? Because he had no feet. Bones. No feet. Yep. No feet bones. Also the fact that there was graffiti all over the place that said Peter was here. Italians love their graffiti. So, what else? Anything else to talk about? Uh, the obelisk. Oh, the obelisk. So that obelisk right there behind us. Uh, so when the Romans would conquer new lands, they liked to bring back things to show off. So sometimes that would be people. Like, look at these weird people we found. Animals. Animals. Hey, look, there's a giraffe. A giraffe. Look, it's a camel. Yeah. There's homes. There's a camel. Oh, look at this thing. It has humps. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty weird. That is weird. Uh, but things like obelisks. So when they conquered Egypt, they brought back obelisks. Because those are like trophies. And so they brought back these obelisks. But to get them here, they had to figure out how to take them down without the breaking. Yeah, Egypt is really far away. Yeah, nobody wants a broken obelisk. So they sailed the obelisks across the desert. And they built these barges to sail them across the sea. And what they did was they put the obelisk in the water, so under the boat. That way the, all the weight of the obelisk was in the water. So that must have been difficult. <laughs> difficult. Now they say that there are more obelisks at the bottom of the sea than there are on land because there's a lot of trial and error. Have they found any? Yeah, that's of course. why they know. Yeah, that's how they know. More under. Yep. Here. And then when they got them here, they put them in places like Circus Maximus or in the case of the one behind us, Nero. Nero's Circus. So there was a pope. Do you remember this pope's name, the one that moved the obelisks? Sixtus the Fifth. Sixtus the Fifth. Not definitely not Sixtus the Sixth. No, there will never be a Sixtus the Sixth because that's a weird name. Because Sixtus means six. Six to six. Yeah, that's just crazy. Sixtus the Right. So Sixtus the Fifth wanted to move all the obelisks in front of churches. So the one that was at Circus Maximus, he put in front of St. John Lateran. The one that was a Nero Circus, he put where? Right he here. Put, here. Right here. Right here. Because it's like this Nero's thing. Circus was literally right behind St. Peter's Basilica. So they just had to move it not far at all. And so as they were lifting it into place, the engineer in charge said, hey, we need silence in the square so I can call out orders in case something goes wrong. And the Pope was like, okay, I can do that. So he wheeled out a guillotine in St. Peter's Square. Yeah, okay, he just had a guillotine. The Pope had an the Pope used to have his own execution. He lived right down the street here. So he just so he just wheeled out his old personal guillotine that was just sitting in an old cabinet or something. Yeah, like to chop off their heads if they did something. What's a guillotine? It's a I just told you. It's a thing that chops off heads. Yeah, it chops off heads. Automatically, not like a big axe yeah. and an execution. Maybe they used an axe, I don't know. The point is, I mean, it doesn't have to be a guillotine. Maybe it was something else. But the Pope said, if anybody makes a sound, you would be killed on the spot. That's pretty harsh. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a scary Pope. So as they were putting the obelisk in place, they were using a bunch of ropes. Guess what? What? The ropes started to tear, and the tension started to burn the ropes. There was one guy. There was one guy. He was, he was a, a fisherman, fisherman from Geneva. He was in the piazza. And he knew he would be put to death for speaking. But he wanted to save all the people and save the obelisk. So he shouted out, water the robes! Water the robes! And everybody robes. everybody looked at him like, well, I guess that guy's not going to be at dinner tonight. But they did what he said. They brought out buckets of water, poured them on the robes, and they were able to safely put the obelisk in its place. And then after, they brought him before the Pope. Like, here you go, Pope. He made a sound. And the Pope said, Hey, fisherman from Geneva, I would like to reward you for your bravery. What can I do for you? And he said, I have this palm tree farm in northern Italy, and we would be honored, Holy Father, 
if you would use our obelisk, no, not our obelisk, our, our palms. Our palms for the Palm Sunday Mass this year. Each person carries an obelisk. No, no, palms. Waves it around. Oh boy. And so the, fa the Holy Father said, okay, I can do that. To this day, 500 years later. Guess where the palm tree, the palm, the palms of the Palm Sunday Mass here. Right they here. still come so from right that here. guy's farm. Wow. 500 years, that's pretty cool. And then they killed the guy. Not really, they didn't kill him. <laughs> they let him live. But anyway, that's the story of the obelisk. That's the story of why St. Peter's is where it is. That's the story of how St. Peter's tomb was found, how he died. Yep. And next time we're here, we'll take you inside the basilica yeah. where it's not raining and cold. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Ciao. Ciao. So you've probably heard that Rome is built on seven hills. Have you heard that? I know you heard it because we just recorded this. And... <laughs> yeah. You can hear me now. Oh, okay, that wait. Wait, what church is this? Where Saint are we? St. Peter. Wait, what church is this again? St. Peter. <laughs> wait, no, this is my new one. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. So, wait, what church are we at today? St. Peter's. Oh, that's right. Wait, what church is this? St. Peter's. That's right. Saint. Wait, what church is this? Saint Peter. Okay. Wait, what church is this? Saint Peter. That's right. Wait, what church is this again? Saint. Wait, what church is this again? Saint Peter. Oh, that's right. Saint Peter. Wait, what? Where are we again? Saint Peter. All right. What church is this again? Saint. Church is this again? Saint. Okay. Wait, what church is this again? Saint Peter. What church is this again? St. Peter's. Oh, that's... All right, girls. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, wait. Where are we again? St. Peter's. We told it like 20 times.